Check one, two. Go! Curious about real estate? Yes! Then you've come to the right place. Get the knowledge you need. Get over the fear and get started. This is the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show with your host, Michael Quarles. Hello, everybody. Michael Quarles with the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. And today we have podcast 254. It is scenario question, and it was sent in by a real estate investor. And remember, if you have a question, send it to support at michaelquarles.com. Before we get started, you may not be aware that if you text the word wealth, that's wealth, to the number 313131, it is going to send you a series of daily updates to help you keep yourself accountable. So we're gonna send you a little text that says, hey, Phil, what'd you do today? What, what do you wanna to do today? What's the most important thing you did today? What do you wanna to do tomorrow? And then tomorrow, and then we're gonna email you that information, your answers, so you can keep track of it. And then tomorrow we're gonna to do the same thing. Did you get done what you wanted to do yesterday? Yes, no. It's just a great way to remember, hey, those little things, like writing it down, it's an easy way to write down uh, what you need to get done and again be being held accountable by yourself that's kind of cool also remember about our coaching program the gold coaching program it is 247 a month or for six months or 1197 one-time fee it covers a six-month period and that comes with an accountability coach so it's even better than texting wealth to 313131 comes with right now we're doing 13 classes a week on learning real estate investing you get a bunch of one-on-one, -on -one, you get a bunch of class structure, you get a bunch of videos. I think we have like 60 or some plus videos, audios, forms, my contracts, my memorandum of contract, my virtual house buying contract, my knocking on doors contract. I mean, we've got it stuffed full of stuff. Even has a CRM system attached to it. So you can keep track of your follow-up, follow-through, because we know if you talk to somebody and they don't want to sell their house yet, that you have to call them back in 15, 30, 60, 90. We also know if, if you talk to them and they haven't said yes yet to selling you the house, maybe you made them an offer, you got to keep track of that. But you got to keep track. Maybe you bought a house subject too. Got to keep track of that loan. Maybe you bought it with seller finance. Got to keep track of that. Man, there's just all kinds of stuff. Man, it'll manage tenants if you want to rent it out. It'll manage your purchase side, your closing there, your, your holding costs and all that kind of stuff, your resale costs, your showings, your, it'll create your buyer's list for you. That's kind of cool. And man, it's just so awesome. And it's part of the coaching program. You're in the coaching program, you get to use the CRM. Kind of cool. Anyway, that's not, you know, done with the commercial. So we're gonna go on to the scenario question. Here we go. I recently got a call from a seller that wants to set up a time, to discuss my offer. However, they told me that they're also meeting with a couple other investors for the same reason. I'm assuming they're not going to discuss your offer. They're going to discuss their offer. I have run the numbers on the property and there's a lot of potential for either a fix and flip or buy and hold. And I'm very interested. Here are the numbers. Asking 104. Calculated repairs, 39,000. ARV, 225. Rents, 1,050. How do I approach the situation so that I convince the seller to go with me over the other investors they're meeting with? Well, let's look at the numbers for a second. Let's say we're gonna we're gonna take, hang on, let me get my pencil out, my calculator. Take thirty nine thousand. We're gonna we're gonna take that. We're gonna write that down thirty nine thousand. And then let's assume for a second that takes me two months to do. That's reasonable. I can yeah yeah my history two months. So I'm gonna write. I'm gonna give ten thousand dollars per month of time. So two months, 20,000. So I'm gonna 20,000, I'm writing that down. So 59,000. You said ARV is 225 after repair value. So then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna write down 225, I'm gonna subtract $59,000 from it. So let me, let me look here, that's six, six. That means the as is value right now is 166. And they're gonna sell it for 60, 104. So what is 60% of 166? So 166 times 60 percent, we are 6, 30, 9, 30, 30, 30, 30, 
So 60% would be 99,600. So you're going to be buying it like for 65 cents. 70% on the on the dollar would be um, 102 and 42. So you know 106. So you're buying it a little less than 70. Not bad. Not bad. Not you know. Not, I'm not not gonna go go gamble now. I'm, I've got to be conservative. But not a bad deal. Now the 10, the 1,050 in rent sucks. Let's face it. I'm buy I'm buy houses all day long for a lot less. Than, than 104 that do that produce better than that. I mean, so that's, that's, I mean, no, we don't even look at it that way. But the real question is, is what do you, how do you convince the seller to go with you? Well, here's the deal. How good are you? I'm, I'm pretty darn good. Uh, the seller, I mean, they're just talking to other people. They're not, I mean, they're going to sell me the house. Because when I go out there at two o'clock, I'm going to bring my checkbook with me and I'm going to ask the sellers, is there anything else you need me to bring besides my checkbook? And they're going, no, not at all. Because I want them to know I'm there to buy it. I'm not there to talk about buying it. Not there to look at it. Not there to discuss anything except buying the house. And I have used embedded commands over and over and over and over and over and over again. Thing I've said things like, when you sell me your house tomorrow at two o'clock when I come out to buy it. That's kind of cool. Kind of cool stuff. I mean, I've already set them up for, to stop looking for anybody else. I mean, you do not continue to look for your car keys once they're in your hand. Unless, well, maybe, maybe you party too much and you still don't know you found them. But if that's not the case, you typically don't continue to look for your car keys after you have found them. And that's the position we're going to play with the seller. Now, if you're really, 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 really good, you can be the first one there. First one in the door. I'll get the contract. I don't care how many appointments they have. Because I'll just ask the seller when they go, well, I got two more appointments after you. I said, would you like me to call them? I probably know them really well. In fact, I probably trained them. Oh, man. Did you just, did you just feel the, the ability deflate out of those other two guys when I told the seller I probably trained them? I probably know them. I'll call them and cancel the appointment for them. Man, I just took all the pain away twice. Now, if, I'm, if you're not a gorilla investor yet, be the last one. You don't want to be the middle one. You, you definitely don't want to be the middle one. You want to be the one they choose, not the one they're interviewing. Because if I'm the last one, I'm going to ask them. I said, what about those other people didn't make you that made you believe that they weren't professional enough to say yes yet? What about it? Oh, well, it's about price. No, it's not. Because we're all offering the same price. Assuming that we're intelligent. It's not about price. It's about something, some indication that they gave that person that they couldn't perform. I, wanted to, I want them to say it out loud. Well, Mike, he was late. I didn't like his pink shirt. He had four eyeballs. I want him to do whatever it is. Okay? There's a reason they didn't say yes. I need them to announce it out loud. I'm just going to go to contract. You know, if you have a, if you have a, you want to need a soft close here, I'll give you a soft close. Thanks for listening. We'll be right back. Are you running out of leads? It's time you tried Yellow Letters at yellowletters.com. Get motivated seller leads through yellow letters, postcards, zip letters, typed professional letters, greeting cards, door hangers, and business cards. Yellow Letters is a full service marketing company created with your success in mind. Get the personal attention you need to get your direct mail campaign started and get in touch at yellowletters.com. And we are back in three, three two, two, one. one. You asked the seller to say yes. They said, I can't say yes yet. You can't say yes yet? No, I can't say yes yet. Oh my goodness, that's horrible. Well, let's do this. Let's go over the contract we're going to use today when you sell me your house. That way you have the peace of mind knowing it's sold, not only sold, sold to somebody professional who can actually buy it. They're going to look at me like, what? What do you mean? Go over the cut. Well, I don't want to leave anything undone. I want to be able to divulge to you everything I'm intending to do when I buy your house today. Another embedded command. And they're going to go, oh, okay. And I'm going to say, can I get your driver's license? Sure. The moment someone who's undecided hands me something personal like a driver's license, because none of us like our driver's license picture unless you're like a GQ model or something or 
you know, on the cover of Sports Illustrated, you know, swimsuit edition, you do not like your, your driver's license picture. So I know if you give it to me, you're pretty close to saying yes. So I'm saying, oh, your name is, I thought John was spelt J-O-H-N. Let's see, it's only spelt J-O-N. I'm going to write J-O-N, last name on the contract. I'm going to start going through the contract with him. Mine's only three or nine pages. You know, if I'm in, in person, it's going to be nine pages. So I'm going to go through my nine-page agreement. I go, wow. And I'm going to tell him all the things. I'm going to tell him things like, I can assign the house, if I need, the contract, if I need to. When I buy it, I'm going to make a huge amount of money buying it and reselling it and flipping it. Um, I'm a real estate broker. I'm going to tell them that. I'm going to put it on the MLS and tell them that. I'm going to tell them what happens when they back out of the contract that they they owe me 25% of the purchase price or 50000 whichever is greater, and liquidate the damage charges. I'm going to tell them all my inspection periods that I have right the, in, until the close of escrow or the close of closing to inspect. And if I find something during the inspection process, I can cancel the contract. I'm going to be up front and tell them all these things, but I'm going to fill out my contract as I go. Everything. Price everything. Sometimes they're going to look over at me, they go, Mike, are you filling out that agreement? I said, yes, sir, I am. I want to make sure this is the agreement we use today and there's nothing changed on it. So when you decide to sell me your house today, and I know you will because I want to buy it, where this is the agreement. They're going to look at each other and, and there's going to be that little pause and you can kind of tell, like, I think we've got a guy that wants to buy our house, honey. Yes, I am. I'm, that's what I'm there for. I'm not there, honey, but I'm there to buy a house. I'm going to get all the way through it, and I'm going to say, let's do this. Let's get you this money. What day would you like the money? And they're going to tell me, and I'm going to turn the page around. I'm going to put old big old X on the page where they have to sign. I'm going to put a slash under the X. There's already a line there, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to say, go ahead and sign here. Either one of you first. And they're just going to do it. Because I was a professional. I went through the agreement that no one's willing to go through in advance. No one's willing to tell the seller the truth. The truth is, we can assign the contract. We're going to make a huge amount of money flipping it or whatever we do to it. We can market it day one. That we're brokers or agents, if we are. That they can't back out if they, if they do their penalty. We have all kinds of time to inspect it. We're going to be telling the truth. It's what we do. It's what we should do. And they're just going to say yes because, man, I'm just, I'm just being super honest with them. I'm using all those powerful positive negative reinforcements. Every time they say something to me, I acknowledge it. They ask me, if they say something like, Mike, how long have you been doing this? I'm going to say, man, I've been doing this so long. <laughs> I think it's right now 35 years. It's been wonderful. Can you imagine buying houses for 35 years and I go, look at you? No, I can't imagine. Man, I just know what I'm doing. I love it. I'm, I, I'm passionate about it. I like helping people. You know, I've bought like a, like a ton of houses from folks like yourself who are just normal, great Americans who just need to sell a house. It's kind of cool to help you guys. Man, you know those kinds of expressions go a long way because a lot of investors can't say that. And even if they could, they don't, which is, I don't get it. Man, if you have a track record that's great, tell them your track record that's great. They, they, people want to follow leaders. Be that leader. They don't want to follow followers. You know what happens when you follow a follower? You don't get anywhere. You follow a leader and you get somewhere. People, people are like that. Understand that. Be in control. You know, have, create your opportunity. Man, those embedded commands, every time you say, I'm going to buy your house, you're going to sell me your house today, we're going to agree on a price, we're going to create a win-win situation. It's fair for both of us. Man, that's a great scenario question. Congratulations on getting a house under contract. Use those words. Don't be afraid of your competition. You know what a competition is? Do you know what the person that you consider a comp competition is? Let me, let me let you free. Let me set you free on this one. You call them competitors. I call them benchmarks. Your competitor, you're afraid that they're going to take something from you. No one can ever take anything from you. You have to give it away. I call them benchmarks. They're either where I have been in my life 
or where I am going. And both are pretty cool. Think about it. You got a new investor out there that's competing, benchmarking with you. Man, they're struggling. Man, I know what that feels like. I was there. I bought my first, second, third, fourth house kind of thing. I get it. I understand. Or you got that guy and the gal out there, and they're on their 5,000th house. Wow. Wow. Knowing that someone else has done more than you have so far should be the reason you get up every day out of bed and want to go do it. To, be, to know that it can be done, to be the Roger Bannister, the first four-minute mile, that you have that for you, that now you know you can run that four-minute mile because somebody else did, that's awesome. But to be Roger Bannister is awesome too. So they're not competitors. That's a weak word. It has nothing to do with prosperity and abundance. Anyway, guys, this was a fun one. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to the Michael Quarles Real Estate Show. Get more info and stay in touch at michaelquarles.com.